Welcome to eCancer March. Quick roundup, starting in Costa Rica and just off the plane, and had a fabulous time at an eCancer oncology radiation therapy meeting in San Jose in Costa Rica. Uh, we had 520 oncologists from Costa Rica, from Panama, from Colombia, and over the border into Miami. And there were 57 presentations of uh, work, that uh, research work and uh, clinical work uh, that are being done in, in those uh, countries. Really, really stimulating. Uh, two full days starting at 8 in the morning and there were over 400 people each morning at that time. Not too many uh, places uh, where you'll expect that. And then a uh, word about Africa, um, be another place full of keen oncologists and just a reminder that the Africa palliative care modules, 20 of them, one hour each, supported by the Atomic Energy Commission. They've been seen by six or so thousand uh, oncologists and uh, healthcare professionals in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, but uh, they're still there and they're still free and uh, they're still first class. They're so good that the specialists uh, running the Indian Palliative Care Association called eCancer and asked uh, if we could possibly refilm uh, Indian specialists uh, who of course have a different set of problems in palliative care in India. This we've done and those are up and, uh, and, and live. We have support for a Spanish Latin American uh, version which will shoot in uh, Argentina uh, in the next few months and also a Portuguese uh, version for Brazil which we'll film with uh, palliative care specialists in Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo. Uh, also later in the year. In the journal this week we've got two really interesting editorials uh, on sort of how to do things. Um, Bishal Agawale, who's our famous uh, blogger, is given uh, advice about a new kind of toxicity in cancer called financial toxicity. And of course he's absolutely right. Uh, he says uh, with his usual acute uh, observations that uh, Cancer doctors tend to push the blame for expensive medicines and treatments like uh, uh, Da Vinci for uh, uh, prostate and, and uh, gamma knives and protons and so on onto uh, governments and uh, industry. He says that uh, we should be um, taking a lot more care to solve some of the problem ourselves by cutting out uh, treatments that don't work and selecting low-cost treatments when they're just as good or not quite so good, but certainly uh, not very much worse uh, than these expensive medicines. Mm -hmm. Worthwhile and certainly a uh, crystal clear message, as always, from Nepal. The other editorial is a coaching editorial, if you like, on how to put together a clinical research project. The editorial comes from uh, Mika van Hemmelrijk and Cecilia Bosco at the Epidemiology group on cancer studies, King's College London, and they take a very pragmatic view of how from day one you to start with a multidisciplinary team. So it's not just, in their case, uh, surgeons and uh, physicians and pathologists and psychologists, but they're pushing the relevance of having epidemiologists and statisticians in at the beginning to sound out the usefulness of the, uh, the question being asked and how big the gains uh, potentially could be and, and, and how they can help with analysing data and also help with um, putting together uh, first-class uh, uh, publications. Uh, especially if you're starting up in a clinical research career, I'd recommend this to you. And there's an interesting ob observational paper from Antonio Lombard-Bosch and colleagues in Valencia and they have observed that uh, the histology of GIST tumours, really very similar to spindle cell synovial sarcomas. And they've been uh, running a number of xenograft models of both kinds of tumours. And they've observed remarkable similarity in the angiogenesis parameters. Almost all the angiogenesis parameters that they measured uh, were similar. Uh, too similar, they say, for coincidence. So, interesting lead on uh, to rare cancers. Uh, which might have similar biology. Lastly, uh, Luca Mozzarelli from uh, Milan has given his uh, 
usual unbelievably thorough and academically pointed um, critique of the ASH meeting uh, held just before Christmas. Uh, you've, if you've uh, been reading eCancer for more than a year, you will have seen this man's writing before, and it's really is excellent. He covers the various areas of growth. Inevitably, immunology is big time. Inevitably, CAR T cell results of uh, big trials are awaited eagerly. Next, next generation um, examination of uh, the use of genomics or the lack of use of genomics. They're all there. It's a very detailed paper and you just have to read it if you're in hemato-oncology. Also in hemato-oncology uh, we have uh, been to Delhi and in Delhi we filmed uh, experts uh, at the International Myeloma Workshop. This is a big event and all the big players were there. There are a number of videos which I commend to you, particularly good uh, discussions between Paul Richardson from Dana Farber and Maria Matios from Salamanca, Spain, and uh, a four-man round table from Philippe Moreau from Nantes. The bottom line is that myeloma is progressing quite remarkably well. Patients are now expecting four, five, six-year uh, survival from diagnosis. Uh, we're now down to interesting debates, not about how to prolong median survival from 24 months to 26 months, but how to establish minimal residual disease and how the sequence of some remarkable uh, new drugs which have poured out of the labs in the last five years, how they could best be put together uh, to benefit patients in terms of longevity and uh, minimization of side effects. So IMW in Delhi, ASH uh, before Christmas with a broader perspective of hematoma oncology, uh, but both uh, certainly worth watching. And uh, I'll speak again in April.